everyone, Sir Terman here again. And today we bring you a special video. Just like it is tradition, every time we have a new patch, we're going to do a patch notes breakdown. Now, we don't have any new cards in this patch. It's just really balance changes. So we're not going to do the full like 15 deck recommendation. Instead, after we do the patch notes breakdown, we're going to do kind of like a section called winners and losers, where we discuss the decks that I think are the winners of this patch and the ones that I think are losers of this patch. And then we'll do a smaller kind of deck recommendation section where I pull up some of the current lists that I think are going to be really powerful once the new patch hits tomorrow, Wednesday. So stick around. It's going to be a long one. I always ramble too much when I talk about these patches, but I know that it's a patch that a lot of you have been waiting for because this is the patch that's going to give us this siren song nerf. So let's go ahead and begin talking about the patch 4.7 notes. And let me make sure that I'm able to move my camera around as I need to. Okay, there we go. So patch 4.7, right? So here, Vario has the little summary of all the car updates. Uh, we'll go through this later when we go and do the winners and losers. So let's leave that open right there. And let's just talk about the updates here. So let me actually zoom in a little bit and let's move the camera gets to the right side right because the cards are going to be on the left so first we're going to go through the nerfs right the first nerf is to crimson pigeon so the pigeon instead of being a grant plus one plus one now is give me plus one plus one this is a huge nerf right think about it ever since the crimson pigeon was released it has become a staple in every single Nazis aggro deck from Giannani to pirate aggro like you name it, it yeah you even see it being played in stuff like Ka kale nico which is playing birds and that's because of how much aggression the crimson pigeon can put into the opponent right now that it's gonna be give instead of grant that aggression gets reduced a lot because the problem with the pigeon is that if you didn't if you didn't answer right away early on, eventually it gets out of control because it goes to 3-3, 4-4, 5-5, three, three, four, four, five, five, etc. So you have to be able to trade with it. And usually you're trading two cards to, to kill it unless you're playing something like PNC that can just mystic shot the pigeon away, right? Uh now it's easier to trade into it. As soon as you have any unit that has three power, even if you summon that unit a little bit later into the game, so you might take the first three hit for the pigeon but then you know that next time you have a three power unit that can block the pigeon while before you would have needed to have a four power unit to be able to trade with the pigeon and that makes a big difference so i think this card now is going to be a little bit more more i guess us being able to deal with it did they need the nerf i don't know i don't think aggro is in an amazing position like if you want to say something like jenna and is strong or like pirate aggro, I guess, is strong in certain situations. I don't think it was just because of the Crimson Pigeon. So it is going to slow down a lot of those decks. And maybe this is also a nerve to like Jin Samira, which has been one of the aggro decks over the past two months. I, I just don't think it was necessary. But I'm not complaining. Crimson Pigeon was a powerful car. I just think it was a little bit necessary to nerf this car when I don't think it's problematic in the current, in the current standard meta. Then we have... I, I swear, this is going to be like reddit's favorite patch right because the coins as you see just got nerfed and cyber song as you're gonna see later got nerfed like this is like a redditor's dream right here these are like all the cards that they were always complaining about and one of those is karma set right we all know how frustrating it could be to have karma just burst beat coins get a bunch of mana be able to answer the coins not go to focus now that doesn't change that karma interaction they can still go and play the coins at focus speed but what it does mean is that they cannot play it at burst speed so let's say what one, one, one situation that you saw happening a lot is like you go you know you, you're about you, you develop a unit opponent plays karma or they have their karma you open attack and then they can respond with like stunts and then do the burst like you you it, you stop them right because they're not they no longer can just draw right to respond to you they cannot do uh oh man place your bets and then be able to refill their mana with the coin right away to answer your open attack or to answer you removing their karma uh because now that the coin is focus speed they can't do that right so if they do play place your bets for example they have a lot less mana to work with while before when they had a level a, a level to come on the field even after playing place your bets they get to refill their mana again so it's like they place your bets so this is actually very impactful it should allow for a lot better interaction 
to be able to either kill Karma or just straight up percent lethal into the opponent. So I think it's a really good change from Ryo, and I really like it that they did it this way. Uh, I think it's a fair, it's a fair nerf, right? Unfortunately, it does mean that he also nerfs other coin champions, <coughs> Jack. But we'll see how Ryo tries to make up for that later in the in the thing. Unfortunately, my video from yesterday on Kaisa Evelyn looks to be very short-lived. <laughs> For some reason, Raya decided that nerfing Kai'Sa was important. So Kai'Sa loses quick attack. So she no longer has quick attack. And it might not seem like a big deal, but it is. A lot of times that quick attack was the last thing that you needed to be able to evolve, right? So a lot of times you knew that as soon as you went to five out of five, uh, to five out of six, that the last keyword could be quick attack and you could level up Kai'Sa when you jump down to the field. Uh, without quick attack, it's going to be a little bit more awkward to level her in certain situations. I kind of confused about why this nerf was necessary. Like, you know, I, I did talk about Case Kaisa Evelyn yesterday, and how it's an underrated deck. But, like, it wasn't something that was, like, broken, right? And even, like, Kaisa Garen or Kaisa Demacia in general also didn't feel like it was, like, really overtuned compared to other mid-range decks in the meta. So... I think this nerf also kind of falls a little bit flat in my eyes. It doesn't make sense. Similar to the Crimson Pigeon. But maybe Riot is preemptively doing this because they expect Kaisa to be strong. That's debatable, right? So I still think you can still play her. It just means that now you're going to have to find another way to get quick attack. Because uh, the traditional Kaisa, the Master decks, don't really have a way to get quick attack. It doesn't really affect the Evelyn decks as much because you can get quick attack from the Huss. And a lot of times, as you saw in yesterday's video, you're going to get that from the Huss. Uh, but it does affect all the variations of guys that play the Demacia because there's, there's not a lot of things that have quick attack in those Demacia decks as it is right now. So surprising, but I'll take it. Part of Pandemonium. Bye-bye. So from 5 cost to 7 cost, I'm so glad. I, I don't want to see this car... I, I, I'm tired of Fissamera. I'm tired of Fissamera. And I know Fissamera wasn't the strongest deck. And maybe I've been a hypocrite. Uh, because, again, it's not a strong deck. So it doesn't need a nerve. But I was tired of going against Fissamera. And having to play around, like, Pandemonium. Especially in certain turns where the opponent could play double Pandemonium. Right? Like, I, I had lost so many games against Fissamera. Where they have the attack token. They play one Pandemonium, you know. Uh, attack with it and then play another pandemonium afterwards to just get like four or five damage burn right so it can be pretty crazy at five cards i think it's fine at seven cards fissimera could still use it to finish your games a lot of times pandemonium will come later into the game once you have this mana thresholds so i think it's still useful in the deck but at least it prevents those double pandemonium turns which could be so annoying to deal with so it gives the opponent a little bit more interactability to be able to to deal with the, with the opponent's game plan legendary charge goes from two costs to three costs so this is a nerf to think about the samira samir surfing decks right so samir oh and, and and you know let's say it right here this is the only change for the turner right so this doesn't really affect us in standard it's kind of like a preemptive nerf to the 10 eternal that's going to come back next month because as you saw samira surfing with the legendary charge and with the plaza guardians which is right here as well that also got a nerf was very crazy right so it was very very crazy so i'm i'm, I'm not upset about seeing this nerf i think it's good uh it, it slows down that that game condition of getting multiple plaza guardians regardless the plaza guardian also gets a nerf so it goes from six six to five five and they're saying obviously we have like a lot of new cheap spells compared to when plaza garden was introduced to the game this card has been around since foundation right so a lot has changed since the very first set of legends of Terra. and now that we have stuff like seraphim that can duplicate a lot of the cheap spells and get this to be reduced and you have stuff like samira that gives you a lot of one cost spells it makes sense for them to kind of bring it down more in line uh so that we don't have to worry about it as much I think it is a fair nerf. Again, doesn't really make, doesn't really change anything for standard, but it is a fair nerf for when we get back to the eternal, uh, et the eternal ladder, right? Siren saw, and then we party. Oh, 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 the game is safe. Okay, well, this is a, this is a nerf, right? It, it's not what people were expecting, right? A lot of people were saying, okay, maybe only have it grind the Huss plus one on one. Maybe you only have. Like, maybe you give them the host vulnerable or something like that. There was a lot of creative nerfs that were offered on Reddit. 
Riot said, nah, nah, we're not going to be creative. We're just going to increase the cost by two. And this is huge, right? Like, I think players overall underrate how much a cost change can, can just kill a card, right? I mean, sometimes it's not enough to kill it, right? Remember, Champion Strength at one point was eight cost, went to nine, and it's still such a powerful card. Siren Song, I think, is still... Siren Song is different, right? Because Siren Song is something that you wanted to play early on. And technically, you can still play it on turn three, right? So this doesn't change your turn three Siren Song. So you can still just pass turn one, pass turn two, play Siren Song on turn three, and you still have to do everything that you want on turn four. But it slows down the deck a lot because now you're not able to play the Siren Song on turn three and still have two mana to be able to play extra units to attack it, right? So it is a big slowdown. It might kill up the card. Like, if it was five costs, I would say, okay, the card's still very playable. I'm still probably going to see in a lot of decks. At six costs, it makes it a lot harder to justify playing something like Fist Target, right? Um, again, maybe you can make some fixes to that deck, and it still allows you to play Simon Song and just go for the same Solani game plan. But having to spend two extra mana, it, it, it's a big deal. No matter how you, no matter how you slice it, it's a big deal. It's a big, big deal. Um, so it's going to slow down the deck a bit and should allow other decks to be able to come back and be able to come back the Siren Song, even after, you know, even after they play it for six mana. So it's a it's a great it's a great nerf. I think it's a great nerf because it still leaves some room for this card to be played in turn three, right? Uh, but it also, again, it's a big, it's a big cost increase. So, so double Siren Song, you're not going to see games where you play Double Siren Song, right? At most, even if you have a fifth target, you only want to play one. And then the second one, just use it in your hand for whatever, right? So, great, great nerf. Let's see if the game can be more enjoyable now that we don't have to worry about Siren Song. Then we go to buff. By the way, I'm surprised how little nerfs we saw. Uh, I'm not opposed to that. I think sometimes nerfing everything can be bad as well, right? Because if you just nerf everything, everything just feels really low power level. Uh, so I think it's good to be to, to not have too many nerfs. Um, so I'm not complaining, but I think there's a couple of cards here that I would have seen. I would have loved to get touched, right? Like if you're if you're already nerfing stuff like Kaisa, because you're worried about Kaisa like taking over the game after the nerfs, and you're worried about Crimson Pigeon because of aggro, it doesn't make sense to me not to nerf stuff like Champion Strength, right? So Champion Strength, I think, is the big miss of this patch of the nerfs, where you didn't see any nerfs at all. And you're still going to see champion strength decks being around, which can be very really polarizing to play against because a lot of decks are not able to deal with just that turn six uh, champion strength. or no, Yeah, turn six, right? Yeah, turn six, six mana plus three spell mana. Uh, so it's still going to be very polarizing to play against stuff like Bando City Demacia, for example, that can strong the board with like Alcax and then just play champion strength. So I would love to see a nerf to champion strength. I think that's a big miss on the nerf front on the nurse front here uh, other cards that i can see potentially needing a nerf will be stuff like condense or slash broadman uh i think you're also going to see kind of like the gin broadman package also be very popular now that deck was doing well because it was, it was a good counter into a lot of things in the meta but without Simonson, i can see that deck that deck gaining popularity again so Two misses, but it is what it is. We'll see how the meta shakes up. Then we go to the buffs, which are the exciting part. This is where Riot can really come back and say, and say like, hey, yeah, we didn't nerf everything, but with all these buffs, we're going to have a bunch of new decks in the meta. Let's see if that's the case. So first, Risky Venture. So instead of a cost three, deal two, now it's cost four, deal three. So one cost increase for one damage increase. I don't like it. I think the extra cost is a big deal. And it's not enough to justify. I mean, because I mean, the, the idea is, is that if you kill something, right, you get two coins back. So technically, you kind of end up saving a mana, right? So it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's still it's still like just a three mana deal three then, right? Because with two coins, you can only get one mana back because you have to spend one mana for the first coin. So if even if you effectively kill something and you get those two coins, it really just becomes a three mana deal three. Is that enough? 
to make this justifiable i i don't know i i, I don't like it i don't think this car is good enough i mean if center gases with stuff like jack uh or set right be able to get that mana can be able to progress their level up but i just don't think that deal that three mana deal three is that great when you have so many other things right in the meta especially because it's only a three mana deal three if you actually kill the unit if you don't kill the unit then it's just a four mana deal three because you don't get the coins back so it's too easy to counter this car and i don't like the cost of it hush from three to two cars this is a great buff this is a great and scary buff but i think it's a buff that's necessary because one thing that i have seen popping up over and over over the past couple of months is this random elusive decks right so where there is like face targan or is pnc and targan or had you know you have like timo which is taking on an elusive deck etc having a having a way way to counter that with a two mana hash where you're able to just silence their elusive and be able to block it i think it's important i think it's very important so i think hush is necessary as we get into these power levels where we have these really big overwhelming units we have these really big elusive units or people that are like we, we have too many buffs right we have too many buffs for elusive and overwhelm that i think having something like hush is important to kind of keep these things in check so i think this deck is very yeah uh, this buff is very good and should keep it should it should it should give up it should give some counters to some of the popular decks that might rise from the buffs and nerfs of this pack so very glad to see hush making a comeback at two costs because way back in the day he was two costs as well so there you go oh okay so then we have the ryan fan pack so this ryan fan pack used to be someone from two cards right so frozen in fear and 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 Rife and then mother which meant that whenever you whenever you play these cards you will have the pack come down with plus one plus one based on how many times you have frozen uh you have i guess yeah how many times you have like uh yeah how many times you have frozen someone right how many times you have frozen been in someone in the game the problem with that is that once you play that card whether it's frozen the fear or, or the den mother that the pack stay like that it stay at whatever stats it came out with now they changed this so that instead of being a static it's like it changes even if you use freezes after the pack is on the field so now it has plus one plus one it becomes an aura so it becomes an aura it has plus one plus one for each time you have frostbitten enemies this game so even after you play it right anytime you frostbit someone after this is going to still continue adding an additional an additional plus one plus zero now it's no longer plus one plus one so it cannot get crazy out of control uh but it is starting at four health so it's not like impossible whatever uh for some reason the cost also changed why did they make it three costs what's the point of making this three costs instead of one cost is there any benefit for changing the cost like isn't it worse that the cost is more now because if they if they recall your pack now it's gonna cost you two extra mana to replay it i guess that's the reason that they increased the cost because because it's an aura now recalling it wasn't gonna be a good counter to it because if you recall it because it's an aura when you summon it back in the field it will gain it will go right back to however much power it had so i'm making it three costs you are at least adding an additional cost to having to replay this pack if you somehow get recall right uh, but overall i think it's a decent change is it enough to make this card playable i don't think so i, I don't i don't think that leblanc and ash decks or ash decks in general really needed something like this um I, I don't think it, i don't think so I, I have seen frozen in fear be used before and it might still be used but like I don't know. I, I don't think this buff is enough to really make this car playable, right? The way that Riot probably is intense. Then we have Jack. So Jack now, when, he used to be when you strike, you create a coin in hand. Now, you still create a coin in hand, but when you refill spell mana, heal me one for each mana refill. Ooh. That's a crazy. That's a crazy buff. That's a crazy buff. Because remember, right? We know from Nami. Oh, actually, no, that's not true, right? So I, I, I almost said something that was probably incorrect. I was gonna say we know from Nami that when you fill your spell mana, it can such refill. 
but that's not true, right? It, it counts as like that for Nami because of the spell, how the spell mana works. For for Jack, it should only be whenever you refill mana. So whenever you refill mana, whether it's with coins, right? So the coins, a single coin will heal, heal him one. Uh, formula, right? Formula refills your spell mana by three. Um, and whatever other cards out there that also refills spell mana, right? For for the most part, the idea here is to do it with coins, right? So now every time you play a coin or if you play a coin that has multiple of it so you're refilling two three whatever mana you're hitting the jack that's actually not bad at all because it makes jack be a lot harder for the opponent to really be to really deal with right so it's a lot harder for opponents to deal with jack because now you cannot just chump block it and then try to like mystic shot it because now you have to be worried about the opponent being able to heal up the jack by just playing the coin so you always have to to be thinking about that especially because you get that coin right away as soon as you strike so pretty much you're always going to effectively have that additional extra health that the opponent has to be worried about and obviously the brass ring jack makes it hard for for people to actually block it i think that makes jack jack a pretty decent mid-range champion uh he already was right he just never really found a home um I could see it making its way into like more Demacia decks, right? Like more mid-range decks like that. As we saw Aragon one time when, when Jack was released, win that tournament where he played Jack with like Jarvan and stuff, right? So I could see that being the case again. And that's kind of one of the things that we're going to talk about later when we get to kind of some of the deck recommendations. But really good buff. I think it's a good buff and Jack definitely needed it because the champion really hasn't seen a lot of play after his release. Additionally, Angel also gets buffed. So instead of being a 6-5 Brash, Brash, now it's a 5-5, five, five, so it loses one power. But when you plunder, you create three coins in hand. This is actually so good. Like, this is actually so, so good, right? Because theoretically, you could play like two, two angels in the same turn. Like, you could literally play two angels in the same turn. Right? Or, or even three, if you have enough, like, unit mana. Right? So, let's think about something like warning shot. Let's say uh, it's turn seven. Right? Turn seven, we have seven unit mana, and we have three spell mana. Right? We can go warning shot, play the first angel. The first angel gives me three coins in hand. I use my spell mana, use those three coins, and now I go back to five unit mana, play another angel, we still have the plunder because we did warning shot and I have two angels in the field and I still have another three coins in my hand plus two spell mana remaining. It's a pretty it's a pretty sweet combo, right? And it's also very nice because this now synergizes really well with Jack to be able to let you let you level up the Jack, which a lot of times I thought that leveling up Jack was actually pretty hard because you have to spend 12 mana in a single round. But now Angel with creating three coins in hand kind of makes that a lot more achievable even if you're not playing something like Karma or Seraphine to copy the coin values, right? Like the only time that you saw Jack leveling a lot of times was when we were playing him with Seraphine and we could be able to duplicate that coin value. Now, I think you have a good chance of just leveling up Jack earlier than he was to in the past. Like this unit is so good and Brash is such a good keyword. So I really like this buff. And again, I could see Angel making its way into a lot of like mid-range decks. Now, obviously the Plunder is a pretty big requirement. So it's like, okay, instead of deck that has to play like warning shot, make it rain, stuff like that. Maybe this makes it into kind of like a, it could be like something like Samira, right? I, I, I could see this like a Samira Bilgewater deck, like the plunder doesn't sound bad either there, right? So I think this unit is great. I like it. It's a great buff and I'm excited to tear craft with her. Then we have the Bakai with the Claw. So when an enemy is challenged, that was the old one. Now, instead, when you play the with a claw you grant an enemy vulnerable and when an enemy is challenged give it minus two zero this round okay so remember the wither claw is like an aura so anytime that you challenge an enemy and and, and challenging something that's vulnerable counts as challenging uh means that you know you're always doing minus two power to them it's not bad, especially because now he actually gives you a benefit right away because you can get vulnerable to a unit as soon as you play it. So he's not just coming down and doing nothing, right? When you play him, you actually get value out of it. I could see this being useful with, with like stuff like Renekton. I, I, I like it. I, I don't know if it's playable. I mean, it is a five mana card. 
but I could see it making its way in certain mid-range decks as a way to like answer some of the opponent's threats. So I think it's a good card. It's a good buff. Whether whether it's gonna see play or not, we'll have to see. I, th I think it's a great buff. Faithful Wolf Duck, it goes from a three, uh, a two, three to a one, two, because now it forges the equipment that it gets attached to it. It's a nice change, right? That the forge means that now that equipment that, that gets attached to the wolf duck is always gonna be a little bit stronger. I still don't think that this card is gonna see play though. I, I don't see this card, I don't see this card being that useful. Um like the forge is nice because then after the dog dies, you're gonna get an equipment that's gonna be forge, which can matter in a lot of situations. But I just don't think that this card is being is too impactful of when it comes down into the field. So the decks that want to play this card, the Masia decks, rather play other stuff instead. Like, you're never going to see this card in Bane Aatrox because a lot of the other units from Bane Aatrox, for example, are a lot more impactful than the Wolf Dog. And the benefit of the, fur the Forge is not enough. So I don't think this buff was necessary. It's a nice buff, though. I just don't think it's going to be enough. Pearl Realis goes from 6 to 5 cost. Cool. So it's like a buff to the Porokin. Is that going to be enough to make the Porokin useful? I don't think so. Because the problem with Porealis wasn't the cost, right? The problem is that even when you play Porealis, you're getting cards that still cost their full cost, right? So the Poros next is still cost three each, and the random Poros still cost one. So you're pretty much spending five mana to create four cards. So it's like a five mana draw four, but the cards that you're drawing are still costing you a lot of mana, right? So think, think about stuff like, think about stuff like progress, right? Progress day is eight mana. So it's three more mana, but at least the three cards that you draw are reduced by one, right? I would have preferred to see this still cost six, but reducing the cost of stuff by one. I think that will make Porealis better. Uh, it's still playable, right? You, I, I still played one Porealis in my Poro King deck that I showcased last week because I think it's still useful, especially when you're kind of running out of resources and you need to have additional porous snacks. I just think I don't see this being played as more than a one or two off at most, right? It's not. It's never going to be enough to, to play it as a three off. So these are certainly going to be some of my favorite changes right here, right? So all three of these buffs are grouped together because they're buffs to Nico, right? So it was buffed to the tribal regions. The first one is a buff to one of my favorite cards in the whole game, Warding of the Tribes. Nine cost to eight cost. Nothing else changes. This buff is huge again i i talked about it earlier people underrate how much nerfs in cost can be right how much increasing the cost of something can be an issue the same applies the other way reducing the cost of certain cards is such a big deal like this now comes a turn earlier and that could be the difference of getting you to your lethal position sooner rather than later. So, like, this is so good now in the Nico Frelier deck. I'm absolutely ecstatic to play that more and kind of see how it shapes out with playing the Warden of the Tribes a turn earlier than you would have before. The Crested Lion Heart goes from 5-5 five, five to 6-6. Six, six. I think this card is still not really great, right? Uh, I don't think it really does enough, so I don't think it's still playable. But then the other one here is Glacial Saurian. It's a, from a 5-5 five, five to a 5-4, so it loses one health, but now it gains Overwhelm. And this is, again, huge, because that deck that I was talking about with Nico and Warden of the Tribes also plays the Saurian. And having the Saurian naturally have Overwhelm means that when you drop down this Warden of the Tribes, not only is not only is your Warden of the Tribes going to be like a 10-10 Overwhelm, but your Saurian is also going to be like a 9-8 Overwhelm, right? If you have at least four tribes. With that Nico deck, you're probably going to have five or six tribes by the time you get to turn eight. So this is literally going to be like an 11-10 Overwhelm that the opponent has to also deal with in addition to the Warden of the tribes and this card still drawing your car is still giving plus one plus one to everything else everything else this car is over tuned to the point that you also were seeing this car in orange jets recently like this car is so so good now that it has overwhelm it's so good in jets Horn, and it's going to be so good in nico still um I, i'm so excited i'm so excited for this car and this buff like this failure nico dream is gonna be a reality and you're all gonna complain no no you're not gonna complain right right, right? You, you you we all love nico we need to give her a chance right so 
I'm 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 so excited. I'm actually so excited for for this this warning of the charge deck. I'm I'm so I'm 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 stoked. I'm stoked. And that's the end of the buffs. So I'll be honest. I'm disappointed, right? I talked about it earlier. Right, and not, and and don't, and don't mind the lack of nerfs. The lack of nerfs is fine because I feel like it's better when when the level of power is a little bit higher than when the level of power is too low. However, if you're not gonna do a lot of nerfs, I think you should at least do a lot of buffs. So you either have it one way or the other. We don't get enough buffs here, in my opinion. We don't get enough buffs here to completely change up the math. Uh, so you're still gonna see a lot of decks that are the classic decks that have been played for the past three months, right? Like you're still gonna have a lot, still gonna have a lot of champion strength tiles. You're still gonna have Gats on, which actually got a buff, right? So, so, so a lot of these decks that you have been seeing around for the past couple of standard meta are still gonna be the same, right? And and that's a little bit worrisome. Um, we're still probably going to see more Nico and Nidalee now. I still think Porokin is a little bit bad. But now that Simon Song is not a thing, you're probably going to see a lot more Nico and, and Nidalee coming around. So that's going to bring some life to the meta compared to the past month where it was just all Simon Song. But I would have loved to see more buffs to some of the weaker archetypes that are in the game. But what can you say? Overall, this patch, I think, could have done more. Right, because this is the main patch, right? This is the main patch that we get every three months. The three month cycle that Raya has, you have one month where it's the new cards, new expansion, which was last month. Then you have one month where it's like a full balance patch. And when I think that, I'm thinking you're gonna give me like 30, 40, 50 changes, right? Doesn't feel like this hit the mark. Because then the next patch that we get is where we get the uh we get a few new cards, right? So we get a few new cards and get some a little bit less balance changes. So this was supposed to be the big balance patch that happens every three months, and it just didn't hit there, especially when we had the Simon Song being such a mess. Uh, now, Riot said that the timing of this was weird because they were on vacation during the time of the new pa of the patch that just came out, and now this patch. So I understand they were on vacation, they had their summer break, so they probably didn't have enough time to really evaluate where the, where the nurse and the boss should have gone. But still, we have loved to see a little bit more than what we got in this patch. Uh, there's a couple bugs here that would fit. The his obliterator now actually gets to obliterate. Uh, shadowing the brush will no longer be prismatic, so you don't need to disable all prismatics when you're playing Nidalee or any other ambush unit, etc. etc. Javelin toss will probably hit targets uh, instead of hitting the Nexus. Spider nesting. Uh, yeah, most of these changes are really minimal. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, that's my thoughts on the patch notes. I think they're good, right? The nerfs I think are good, are fair. Some of them I think were a little bit too preemptive, and that's okay, though. They're not anything crazy. There was no nerf that really made me jump out too much, right? Some, some, some were a little like, really? You know, like, again, I think Kaisa's nerf was a little bit odd at this situation. But again, I can understand why they did it that way. Some of the buffs I think are missed. But maybe I'm underrating how powerful stuff like, like the uh, Grand Fan Pack or the Risky Bench might be. Some of them are really good, right? Like the Hush and the Angel, I think are probably the two highlight buffs of the patch. Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess I say highlight buffs, but the, the Surian is also a highlight buff. Like some of these buffs are great. I just wish I want to see more. But anyway, let me rambling on that. Let's go out to the next section of today's video where we kind of talk about the winners and losers of the patch, right? So we're going to discuss some winners and losers here, some of the decks that I see that are going to be very powerful when the patch drops tomorrow. And then we'll spend like another 10 minutes after we do this, giving you some example, of some of those decks that we're talking about. First, let's talk about the losers, right? So so some of these are very obvious. Every Siren Song, nerd, every Siren Song deck is going to be a lot harder to play. So from Fate Stargun to Ilawi, Lucian, like Siren Song is no longer a, a, a threat, in my opinion, right? So anything here is not going to be something to worry about. Samira Seraphine is going to be a lot weaker as well. Fizz, Samira is going to be super weak. Kaisa is going to be a little bit more awkward to level her up, but I still think she has a lot of potential to be really strong. And then Aggro Dex also took a big hit with Crimson Pigeon. And then finally, Karma Set. Are these nerfs going to be enough to kind of push those decks completely out of the meta? It's debatable. I think Kaisa is still going to be present in the meta. Um, 
I still think Karma Sec could potentially be good, but again, I, I think this nerf is actually super huge, like the coins. Uh, but I could still see it being good. I think I, I, for sure I shouldn't we shouldn't expect a lot of Siren Song decks, right? So so very easy there discussing about what the losers are. They're very obvious, and you kind of just have to look at the nerves that you have in the patch. Let's discuss the winners of some of these buffs that we're seeing here. So some of the decks that are like super winning here are any jack deck, right? So Jack has been away for a long time. Now, think of like stuff like, again, I gave the example of Aragon. Aragon, there was an event that Ryo had when Jack, Samira, and Seraphine, uh, when Jack, Samira, and Seth were released, they had like a community tournament, right? Where each member of the community represented a different team. Aragon kind of won the tournament for his team using this Jack the Massive deck. That was really cool mid-range deck. Um, and I think that could kind of make a comeback, right? Like a super mid-range Jack, the Masia deck that plays Tango could be a good combat. You could have a new archetype where you could have Jack and Samira or even Jack set as well could also see a lot of power here just because of how much value Angel gives us with the three coins that she brings down into the field. And because she's in Bilgewater, you can manually automatically put in her deck ways to trigger plunder as necessary. I don't think Risk Adventure is going to see see that much play in those decks but jack himself and angel should definitely see the play in those decks right so those, that's one of the big winners of this patch nico is another big winner of this patch nico frelier i think it's going to be really really powerful uh especially because warding of the tribes coming down one turn earlier so when i'm looking at these buffs jack nico are the things that that, that jump on me Targon control piles are also going to be really powerful, right? So maybe like, because remember, we have in Target, we have Hush. In Target, we have the Cosmic Journaling. We have a lot of like tools to slow down the opponent. So I can see some Celestial type of control decks. Uh, well, not Celestial, because most Celestial cards got rotated. But stuff like Aso, right? Some type of like Aso control decks that can play Hush as a way to be able to survive against some big overwhelm units, especially with, like I said, stuff like Warning of the Tribes, or the Surian being more playable now, or even Angel and Jack, the Hush could be really important and preventing you from just dying to those Overwhelms or those other keywords that the opponent has. So a lot of target piles are going to be including Hush now. So just be prepared to play around that when you are playing, when, when you are playing and, and kind of committing for like a lethal attack. Because it, Hush being buffed to two mana also means that the target Telstones got buffed, right? So target Telstones, not only does he have Hush at two mana, but also still has the blessing of target, right? So now that's two buffs kind of like back to back to the target Telstone. And all of a sudden it's probably the best Telstones in the game because of those two buffs and just how how efficient this hush can be uh in that situation, right? So so those are the big winners from just looking at the buffs. Another big winner is Jack Orn. Jack Orn is gonna be a uh, Jack's Orn, not Jack. Jack's Orn is going to be very powerful. It was already a deck that saw a lot of play in the previous room, Terra Open, and it kind of got above with Less and Sorian, right? But not only that, it didn't get any nerfs. It didn't get any nerfs. Uh, it's still going to be very powerful on what it needs to do and kind of get over a lot of the mid-range decks that are going to pop up, like Jack and other mid-range decks. This, the, the Jack's Orn decks could potentially get over that and, and be bigger than those decks. So I see Jack's Orn been a really big impactful hit other car other decks that are kind of winners of this patch that didn't get any nerfs are stuff like champion strength even though champion strength didn't see any buffs here stuff like samson got nerfed so the the, the games is going to slow down a little bit more crimson page got nerfed so again the game is going to slow down a little bit which gives you more time to flood the board especially if you're playing something like bando city and then just go for champion strength you could still have scouts and then go champion strength um like it's still gonna be a problem, right? So it's still gonna be a problem. Or you, you have elites and champion strength, right? So you have elites champion strength, scout champion strength, bando city champion strength. The car is still gonna be very polarizing whenever you run against a champion strength deck. Not getting any nerves is a big deal. So I see that also being a big winner of this patch. The other one that also surprised not to see any nerves, and even though they didn't even see any board any buffs, is the Jin nar or Jin nora brahmin piles like those decks yes they were mostly used as kind of like a counter to the current meta that was happening in this previous patch but they're still very good on their own even 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 without 
something as obvious to counter. And Brahmin can be really good against a lot of these mid-range decks. So I could see this, I could see those decks being really good again. Uh like still doing really well in the new meta. So still expect a lot of those Jin, those Jena Nora decks to, to come around and kind of stick around. Uh, those are like the big, the main ones that I see kind of winning. Uh, another one that I think is a big winner of this patch, I like the Timo some monuments, right? So some monument got no nerves, right? So now you can play Timo a little bit more freely, uh, not having to worry about Savage Song and just getting outrun by Savage Song very quickly. Now, the problem is that Hush also got buffed. So Hush technically should let us fight against Timo a little bit better. But a lot of times what you find out as you play the team of Sunfume decks is that even if your team of doesn't hit the Nexus and duplicates their shrooms, you still get a big advantage from just having uh, the Peddler and be able to just put a lot of shrooms. So that deck that I showcased from Devo last week is still going to be very powerful and the Sun Monument is going to be really good at stopping some of the damage that some, some of these mid-range decks are going to try to push through into you right away. So still expect that. Uh, and, and I'm sure where Nidalee is going to land, right? Like, I think Nico is going to be playable now. Nidalee, I'm still iffy, right? With Five Savage Song, Nidalee should find a better spot in, like, a mid-range meta. Whether that's actually going to be the case or not, we'll, we'll have to see. So, so, yeah. So, those are the big winners, in my opinion, of the patch and some of the big losers. So, that's kind of what you should be expecting to see in the meta as the meta develops over the path of the next month. Uh, I, I, additionally, with Team of Sun Fumes, I also wanted to mention the get in general, like elusive decks. I've seen a few elusive decks popping around, whether it's Targon PNC, Targon Bilgewater. I've seen Targon PNC, I think Cephalopod posted a deck of a Targon PNC deck that also plays some monument. That's just an elusive deck. Those decks are also going to be very powerful as the meta develops as well. So just, again, be mindful of that. As the meta slows down, you're going to see more mid-range, a little bit more control, more lagging win conditions, but that also invites stuff like elusives to come into the play and just make everybody happy. But for sure, some monument is going to be the next card that people complain about. So anyways, uh, that's going to be it for a passionate breakdown and my winners and losers of this patch. I am going to spend another like 10 minutes just giving you some example of some of those decks for the winners that I talked about. Uh, some of these decks have not been updated yet with the new changes. I just didn't have time to do like the whole 15 deck recommendations. So you might have, even when you copy these deck codes, make sure that you edit with some of the comments that I might make right now as we talk about them. So yeah, let's jump ahead to so this. Let's decks. start with those champion strength decks that I kept talking about. Let's just get this out of the way. You're all gonna be tired champion strength because I think these decks are still very, very powerful, right? So first one is scouts, right? Scouts does very well. You just flood the board. Shell shock gives you mana back. You get extra help with your sculptor. So you just flood the board. Mariah Warden lets you get some value. Navigator floods the board. Queen floods the board. And then you just set up and play champion strength, right? Combine that with the power of misfortune. We say, you know, the opponent has to move right away. And I could see scouts being very present in the meta. The problem that scouts has, and the reason why it might not be as strong as other champion strength piles, is that it tends to lose to the bigger Demacia or the bigger mid range piles, right? So some of the other. Demacia uh, piles might actually just get over it, even through the champion strength power and the power of misfortune. So this is one of the first decks I recommend to you to play. Your scouts with champion strength. Another champion strength pile is gonna be Bar and Garen, right? So Bar and Garen has kind of gained some popularity over the past couple of weeks as well. I think he top one of the Master Yerwin Terra tournaments, right? And the idea here is just elites, right? We're just playing elites, and instead of playing another region, we're playing Bar for additional shines and the Bird for additional buffs as well. So we're able to double up Bar very quickly between the Champion Strength and the buffs from the Battlesmith or even the Garen buffing my whole board. So it's just straight up, just play a bunch of cards. Obviously, cheat, cheat out your Squire. Uh, you have your Vanguard, you have your Silver Wind Fly, which can get you more Silver Wind Vanguards. And then once you have a Flood Board, lo and behold, Champion Strength again. Again, you're going to get tired of this card. You're going to get tired of this card if you're not already tired of it. I think Champion, I think Ryan missed the ball by not nerfing it. So, here's the third Champion Strength pile that you might see running around a lot. And this one is going to be Timo Tristana Demacia. So, 
We all know how powerful it was to be able to flood the board because of Grandfather Fane Mayor and just getting a bunch of Alcats, right? So you can just flood the board pretty quickly with these Bandle City Swarm decks. And then your son turn six. Once you had the blood that that board flood, just play champion strength and just kind of win the game from there. We even get to add stuff like the surgeon here, which lets me pick one of the other units and top of my deck and be able to summon them. So again. It's kind of like an extra unit here that summons two units and just a lot of value everywhere else. So these three decks all play the same way. Just flood the board and then just play for champion strength on turn six or seven and just win from there once you have the attack token, right? So whether it's turn six or turn seven, depending whether you're attacking or odds or even, these, these decks are going to just be really, really, really horrible for anybody to deal against. So yeah. <laughs> Champion strength, that's what we're winning. But, but, but there are some counters for champion strength, right? And one of my favorite counters is Jack's Own. Now, this list here doesn't have it. Uh, but uh, one of the, one of the favorite things to play in Jack's Own now, and one of the things that you should add, actually, let me let me see if I can find a Jack's Own list, list that actually has it, right? So I'm a really big fan of having Barry in Ice, right? So by having Barry in Ice on your, on your Jack's Own list, and this one doesn't have it either. Uh, I think I think I like the list that. Um, so let's look at let's look at Kaki, right? Let's look at Kaki Baki. So the list that that Baki was playing in the Winter Open. This is the list that I would suggest, right? So this list again has access to very nice, and very nice gives us a way to come back. The champion strength things. However, Kaki doesn't have the saurian right so that's the other the other own deck had the saurian there that i said i'm really i'm really liking the glacial saurian on onlets so what i'm saying is that you probably do a mix of both this list right your yats own list in the new patch should have the glacial saurian and should also have at least one champion strength so that you can actually beat the champ uh, should have one copy very nice so that you can actually beat the champion strength. So a mix of both of this list can get you there. But in general, Jatson has the same game plan. You have your early units that kind of forge your equipment. Then you have your equipment units here, including Jats, and you just put a lot of pressure, a lot of black value and pressure into the opponent. Really, most of the units here are going to be the same in every Jats own list. Most of your changes are going to be on the spell side of things. And people have a lot of preferences, right? Like I've seen people play Bellows Breath. I see people that don't like it. Again, you have Wild Claw. You have Very Nice. You have people playing Double or Triple Sharesies. Uh, definitely Fish Fight always has to be a three off. But again, this is this is always going to vary. This is where you're going to see the most difference. So I'm going to link this list because he has the Glacial Shuren. But again, make sure that you add at least one Very Nice if you try to play Jack's Arm. The next one is Nico, and this is the exact same list that I showed you in a video last week. And I'm not changing anything here because we're already playing the Triple Sorian and we're already playing the Triple Warding of the Tribes, which is now a cost. And this deck feels even better. We even had the very nice here, which again, I think is important to be able to counter Champion Strength and not just die on turn six if you're playing against the Champion Strength deck. Also, by the way, that is why. The Timo version of Champion Strength might be the best one because if you have multiple Alcats with Spell Shield, opponent really doesn't have a great way to like the very nice doesn't do anything against the Spell Shield. Yet. But anyways, anyways, and the the other problem with very nice sometimes is that like even if you very nice their Champion Strength turn, unless you can finish the game in next turn, then they just get all their units back on the turn after, right? So. That's also where Barry Nice can be a good counter, but not always enough to win you the game. But anyways, this deck, just go back, look at my video, and just look at how much fun we have with Nico. Uh, it's so fun. Just you get to buff your units a lot between the Almond Hawk and the Saurian, and then you play the fluffs, then you play the one of the tribes. Like this curve is so good, right? Because you can play turn seven fluffs if you already have a pretty big board. And then turn a warden, and it just feels so good, right? So either one of these units are so good at, at buffing up your whole board if you have a pretty wide board. Uh, and it just, oh my goodness, I love this deck. Play it. 
if you love my content make sure you play nico with freddy because i I'm, I'm in love with what this deck can do now with this also being an overwhelm because one of the problems that this deck has sometimes is that even when you play the warden of the tribes most of your other units don't have like overwhelm or elusive right so the opponent can just kill the warden and try to chump block the other units and that's a lot of what a lot of times how they build how they buy time to to beat you but with a second overwhelm unit on the field now and potentially even more if the combat could get some nice equipment it becomes a lot harder for the opponent to be able to deal with two overwhelm units instead of just one which was a warden of the tribe so i i just i love this i love this so play this deck please please Another deck that I think is a big winner of this patch is Bane Quinn. It's a mid-range deck. Didn't really get any nerfs. The one problem with Bane Quinn is that it has a bad matchup into Jack's own, right? So depending on how popular Jack's own gets, it might make the Bane stocks go down. Uh, but Bane Aatrots, I don't know what I keep saying, Bane Quinn, Bane Aatrots can do really well into a lot of the meta uh, if opponents are not expecting it. Uh, this, this list is pretty good. Uh, I'm probably gonna just link this list that I found, but you can obviously edit the amount of equipment that you play, which equipment you play, etc. etc. depending on, on what you prefer on your Aatrox Bane list, which is not me that has been running around for a while. So yeah. Another big winner in my opinion, and one that I forgot to talk about in the passion of breakdowns is Jens. Like this deck didn't really see any nerves. The wrench is still really good. This could be like a new way to play aggro, right? So like this deck can still put a lot of aggression and if the, de if the game slow down and people forget about needing to have answers to this aggression, I could see Jens just kind of running out of control just because of how much value you get by discarding the range and just, you know, playing a lot of your cheaper units. So this deck also feels really, really good. If you're looking for a more aggressive approach and just be able to play the range, the return of range, this is a really good option in that avenue right this is more your play style i haven't showcased this deck in the channel yet so i actually think i might showcase it over the next week because again i think it's going to be really strong in the current meta um and it didn't see any nerfs didn't see any buffs either but it saw a lot of other decks that are a lot of powerful decks getting nerfed so this could be really good again if the meta slows down now nora Jin is an aqua one I, I think the deck is still very good Oh wow, this list plays many more from Cosmic, yeah. Huh. I, ju I just found this list online in, in lore stats, so I didn't go ahead and bet it out. I probably should have looked at it before I showed it to you all. There's some stuff here that I disagree with, but we just showcased a uh, Jane Nora video as well the other day. So you can go ahead and take a look at that one. Actually, maybe, maybe we just pull my list right here, right? So let's just go ahead and pull my list right here, because I do think my list, I, I, I prefer my list. You know, I'm obviously I'm biased, I'm biased, but I prefer my list a little bit better. So this is the list that I'll put in the description below. Uh, maybe the Desert Naturalist is not necessary anymore because we no longer have to worry about River Slow like we were doing before. But I still like the, the Dust Taja. I, I like just the general, just kind of how clean everything looks here compared to the other list that we had before, which was playing a lot of like more one or spells. Uh, I'm actually going to leave this list instead now that I think about it, just because I don't like having the Desert Naturalist. I think the Portal scholar, scholar is really the way to go now. Now that you don't need to be able to destroy the landmarks, this deck should do really, really well uh, in the meta, right? Especially as the, as, as the meta kind of becomes more mid-range. I think this deck has a lot of ways to answer that, especially with Brabman and Riptide Rats being able to get rid of the opponent's units. Then we move on to the Degenerate decks, right? And by Degenerate, I mean Teemo decks. So Teemo Submonument, again, also have a video on this deck in the past week it didn't see any nerves right so it didn't see any nerves some monument is still going to be a problem i bind you an additional two turns three turns sometimes it's crazy how much time the some monument can buy you and now oh man like this 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 deck is going to be even crazy right because now you're not getting rushed down by the fearsome from like uh reverse throw so it gives you more time to be able to stabilize uh now there's some decks that are going to be very powerful against this right like i think some of the demaster decks can be really good especially if you play the, the blocking badger bear or if you play stuff like fish fat or single combat 
that allows you to kill the Teemo. I think that's going to be really good at dealing with Teemo or dealing with the Puffcat Peddler if you also have like a challenger like the Broadwind. So I think maybe against the Masia, it could be a little bit weak just because your Peddler is going to be more vulnerable. But I could see this doing really well if the meta slows down because I think it does pretty decent against some of the slower decks that you're going to find around. Uh, because eventually you can just drop down this from this sub monument and just buy yourself more time to be able to join to the Karina and just do your shenanigans with Karina and condense to kind of win the games. Really, really good deck that I still see it. However, there's another deck that has been popping around that also plays some monument, but instead of playing for the shrooms, it's just playing fully loses. And this is the deck that I kept referring to during my patch notes breakdown conversation earlier. And this is that elusive target deck. Now, obviously, the idea here is simple. You just attack it with a bunch of elusives, and if you ever feel yourself that you're, you don't have enough to kill them just yet, you just play some monument, which buys you another turn or two for you to be able to attack with your elusives again. So again, the some monument is all about just buying you that additional turn or two that you need to be able to, to, be able to present lethal. And this is doing this perfectly because you can just attack with the elusives on your next turn again after you play the sub monument to be able to save off one or two attacks. So really cool because one of the weaknesses that elusives had is that a lot of times you don't want to block with your elusives because you need them to be able to push lethal into your opponent. So the sub monument kind of fixes that problem by just having, by just having like a way to just stall out, right? So so really really nice here. I think it's a really cool elusive deck. So Cephalopod, I think, was the first one that saw popularizing this. So really cool there. Uh, then let's move on to another classic deck that, again, didn't see a lot of nerfs. And I think could be powerful in the meta. I continue to be powerful. And it's going to be Ilawi Swing. So it's kind of your control. your not just control deck right now with Scorched Earth, your Pirouette, your Heavy Metal, which is going to be really premium, by the way. Heavy Metal is going to be really good in this current meta because of uh jack's horn and also bane decks right so i will i would recommend playing heavy metal the problem with this deck is can be a little bit weak against champion strength decks right because if you if you're not able to remove their board they can easily just get out of control with the champion strength and be able to just push enough damage even through your Ilawi. so just be careful there however it should do well against other demacia decks because you have a lot of kind of control tools and again the heavy metal can be really punishing against some of this equipment based decks. so if you're a fan of Ilawi swing you should be happy because this deck should be doing a lot better now especially without having to worry about siren sun just kind of running you over uh before you could do anything about it so really really cool deck and you can just obviously lock people down with the leviathan etc etc Let's go for something more fun here. I think I, I think Natalie again. I, I'm not sure how I feel about Natalie, but I think now that Simon Song is nerfed, that Natalie could see some play, right? Like she, she did feel in the cusp of being like strong. She she felt close to being strong. Uh, just it felt like he was missing something. And I think maybe it's because the meta was a little bit too fast, so she didn't have time to do what she wants to do, which is like leveling up a lot. Now I showcased a Natalie deck the other day, Natalie Nar which I think could be really nice as well. But this is a Natalie Heimer Dinger version that I saw someone link to me, uh, that one of, my, one of our viewers linked to me on the Discord uh, yesterday, right? So the idea here, obviously, you have the turrets from Heimer Dinger. So there's two, there's two synergies here. The ambush units give you spells that you can use with Heimer on the field to get turrets. So you, pretty much you're getting like double value from those ambush spells because you're using them to summon your ambush units while also getting turrets out of them. The synergy is that every turret is going to let you level up literally quicker, right? So it's kind of like a double synergy here where the ambush units are helping Heimer develop turrets and then the turrets are in return helping the literally level up and let us actually get the value from them, right? So I think it's a decent... It's a decent deck with Nidalee and Heimer here. Uh, you get a lot of cool removal here. The production search can be also really nice at leveling up Nidalee, even if you don't have a Heimer thing on the field. Uh, you can get stuff like Mystic Shout, which can be really good in certain matchups. Uh, you have Denies with the Bastaya to you to deal with the champion strength, as well as Red Negation. Quicksand, even a Castigate. I don't know if I agree with the Castigate here, because we do have a lot of a lot of uh, followers ourselves but i could see how this could be really good again dealing with stuff like champion strength i think the castigate is only here because of the seven seven sun decks so you could probably remove that if the meta kind of doesn't have as much followers as it did previously but this deck could potentially be also really good 
And then let's talk about the Jack Jarvan that I kept referencing. Now, this is the list that Aragorn used. Now, this list is like three months old, right? It was in April that Jack was released. So definitely there's some updates that you can make to this list. But the idea is still there. It's just a mid-range deck with Barn Knuckles, Angel, and Jack. So it's mostly the Masia. I guess the Castaway is also here from Bill Schwader. Uh, you probably have to make a lot of adjustments in this deck to allow us to be able to actually trigger Plunder, right? So now that we have the Angel. But the idea is still the similar, right? You're just pushing a lot of damage. You just develop your mid-range units. You get some value with Jack. So Jack, Jack and Angel are kind of just some mid-range value with the coin allowing you to be able to summon to get enough mana to be able to have your spells or be able to be able to develop your jack or summon something else on top of that um what, what, what's kind of cool as well is that if you get enough coins you could technically play like th there's a situation where you could have enough coins to be able to play like king jarvan and jarvan or be able to play jarvan and king jarvan after or be able to play angel refill your unit mana and still have enough unit mana to be able to attack with jarvan right so that's kind of where this coin synergy can come in as well, that you can put a lot of pressure with that. And again, Brash is a very powerful key keyword that people are not expecting. So yeah, I think this really highlighted the decks that I think are going to be really powerful in the in the, in the meta coming up tomorrow. Uh, that was 3, 6, 9, 12, 13 decks that you got today recommended. Oh, wow, we're too off. We're too off from our usual 15 deck recommendations. Let's, let's find two extra decks here. Let's find two extra decks here to get to that 15 that we always do that I think could potentially also be powerful in the current meta. So this, this website, uh, Lore, Lore Stats, is a website that I use a lot to, to, to keep like, uh, to track stats and see what decks are doing well. And it's where I find a lot of like cool decks, right? There's some cool decks here that I think could potentially be also good. Uh, here's, here's that Nidalee... Here's the Nidalee Bando City deck, right? Yeah, so I guess, I guess let's link this one as a 14th. We mentioned that we were talking about Nidalee. So this is Nidalee, um, and let's put it last because we're talking about it last. So this is Nidalee with Chief Knock Attack and the Curious Changelings. So this one doesn't play NAR. I think NAR is good enough to include in this Nidalee decks. So again, you can kind of look at my previous list, list of Nidalee NAR, but I could also see this version being pretty good. Uh, obviously, you don't need the Desert Naturalist anymore because you're not playing against River Swore anymore. But everything else here seems pretty standard of what you want to do with Nidalee, especially the Halutinatis. I think it's a super cool car with, with, the, with the benefit that it can give you leveling, leveling up Nidalee quickly or being able to work with the chain links. And obviously, you all know I'm a big fan of Big Game Tycoon. So any deck that can play Big Game Tycoon is amazing for me. So, yeah. Also, another deck that I recommend here that's 14. And let's see if we can find the 15 deck recommendation today so that we can keep the title and everything the same way that we always do. Uh, none of this deck look particularly like great to me. I mean, it's obviously, some of these decks are really good, right? But I'm trying to look for decks that I think are going to shine in the new meta, right? Ooh, uh, no, this is... I guess we could have another elusive deck here. So the elusive decks were really doing good because they could do well into Siren Song. So I don't think that's one of the decks that we want to cover. Um, the 15th deck. The 15th deck. What will it be? Oh, wait. Why did we not talk about this? This is another winner of this patch, right? And it's going to be a classic. It's Jaymer ha Jace Heimer, right? So Jace Heimer didn't see any nerfs. He didn't see any buffs either, but he already was doing well. Okay, he was doing, it's like a middle of the pack deck, right? So it's a deck that's always doing well and always having like 50-50 matchups into most of the meta. And I think it's still going to be the case here. No longer do we have to worry about Siren Song running us over. So in a, in a game where like the game's in a meta state where the game slows down a lot, I could see this actually also coming back. It can be a little bit awkward against some of the big mid-range decks like Jad's Orn or some of the massive decks. And obviously, Champion Strength is still a big deal. But we do have a lot of tools here to deal with some of the more tall, like go tall units, right? So it's going to depend. If the meta shakes up where you got more decks that just kind of want to go tall and just rely on a couple of key units, like think of like Ilawi Swain, you're able to get rid of those Ilawis or the Swains with your removal here. So this deck could be really good against something like that. 
However, if the decks are more like, if the meta is more like go wide, so you have your Nikos, you have your Scouts, you have your Champion Strength type of decks, then that's when this deck can be a little bit more problematic. Now, you do have Shock Blast, which could allow us to beat some of the smaller Demacia decks, but it can still be problematic just because they can easily flood the board again, if I'm thinking about Bando City, for example, and then just play Champion Strength and we don't have a lot of weight. So, this Heimer is a deck that always seems to be on your radar, and this is not going to be any different if you like the style. It should do better now in rank, but it doesn't have to deal with Siren Song, because Siren Song was a really bad matchup for this deck, uh, just because it was. It, it's really hard to deal with all that pressure from all those one drops that the opponent could just cons consistently play into. So, yeah, that's 15. Wow, I didn't expect that, right? It's a little bit different because, again, I didn't go through these decks and edit them like I usually do, but a lot of these decks that are going to be part of the meta are oh, I already been there before. So I don't think it's a lot of editing that I will have needed to do anyways. So yeah, these are the 15 decks that I recommend for you all to play in the new expansion. I think all 15 are going to find a good position in the meta. And any of those could potentially become the next tier one that people are going to complain about. So yeah, unfortunately, not Poro King. Nico and Italy, I think, are good positions. Poro King are still going to be the worst of the three. So anyways uh yeah that's enough rambling for me been rambling for an hour i'm a little bit late i'm supposed to go visit my mom <laughs> in an hour uh so i should have been heading out but i wanted to give this get this video out for you all here uh before i left so that you all can have my own opinions on the patch and my deck recommendations so hope you all enjoyed the video today and me rambling hope you all enjoy this type of content and tomorrow we'll come back with another video i'm not sure what i want to play next uh, but maybe we try some sort of jack deck, right? So I think maybe some sort of angel jack deck for tomorrow. Uh, or we can try one of the other decks that we haven't showcased in a while. Like uh, we haven't showcased Jin's uh, Returner Wrench, and that could potentially be a really good top tier deck. So we'll see what we play tomorrow. Uh, but for now, hope you enjoyed your day. Hope you enjoy the patch tomorrow. We need to celebrate No More Siren Song. I love you all. Thank you much for watching. If you like the video, make sure to like it below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. And you can also find us on Twitch at Twitch September with Shin every now and then. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The link is to those in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again tomorrow.